Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV and recently I put a video out kind of trying to help answer the question people will say like, hey Josh, if you were going to get an RV, which one would it be? Or what do you think is the best RV? Like questions like that. Um, and it was a very travel trailer focused video and by request people said, yeah, but what if you were going to get a fifth wheel? Um, the thing is, uh, just like the previous video, my answer here varies depending on how somebody might be camping, like how I might be camping. And that's what I want to do. Instead of saying, here's my top five fifth wheels for this year, I want to kind of look at multiple different uh, categories like destination camping, um, uh, uh, you know, family traveling, things like that. And looking at, looking at it that way, in those scenarios, which fifth wheel really sticks out and shines the brightest to me personally? But that's the thing. This is all going to be very subjective. I'm not saying every one of these is the very best of its kind. They're all really, a, a lot of RVs are great in different ways. And I tend to be a Midwestern park camper kind of person. If you're more of a boondock person, I could see your list looking very differently. So that's kind of the thing I want to throw out here is that these are just some of my personal picks. I'm intending this to be kind of like a little bit of a springboard. And if you like what you see, you want to learn a little bit more, check the links in the video description. I'll have links down there to get the full video tour of everything we're looking at, as well as links to check pricing and availability on anything that we're looking at today. I think I've talked enough. Let's get started. Now, kicking us off here, when I think fifth wheels, I think, you know, big space, lots of living space, that kind of, you know, extra higher end comforts that you know, a lot of times the common travel trailer just doesn't provide. So starting us off here with the concept of destination living, an RV that frankly to me, felt more like a house than a camper. You know what happens when you're not paying attention walking around on the roof of these things on an indoor display? Sometimes you hit your head on an I-beam that's hanging down and you end up looking like Mikhail Gorbachev. Bumps on the head aside. Hey RVers, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bishop's RV. Welcome back to the regular return of members of the RV Nerd Herd. Uh, we have with us today, first time I've had my uh, chance to put my hands on this, the 382 Rear Kitchen Alliance Paradigm. And it is beautiful. I, I love this layout. I have always loved this layout from anyone that I've ever seen build it. Because it feels the most like a house of anything I've ever seen in a towable RV. Uh, like right when you walk in the door, it just has this big, grand, wide open look and feel. Um, and they really don't taper the back end of this down like a lot of fifth wheels, so it just stays big all the way through. And this thing has a combination of massive kitchen counters, amazing prep space, fantastic entertainment area, and loads of campsite window coverage that normally you can't blend all those things together in one RV. What's also kind of interesting on this is this is a front bath with a middle half bath kind of RV, but the way that they masked up that half bath, you, it, it just doesn't feel like you have a bathroom like in the middle of your living room. Like it just, it, it, it feels just like a closet right there. It, it really, really works for me. What's also really awesome on this one is that it's base, it's a four slide RV, but it's basically a triple super slide plus a bed slide. Upstairs, the entire door side bedroom and bathroom slides out to really maximize the upper deck sort of ensuite kind of space and feel that you get out of this one. Naturally, though, that does start adding up to the hitchway. We are in Dooley country. Half tons need not apply. Overall, I really love the execution of this. We're getting to, uh, to take a look. Uh, first time I've had a chance to put my hands on a full paint package on one of these. Um, it's almost easy to miss because the colors match up so normally, but there's so many awesome benefits about full body paint on an RV that we're going to talk about as we go. The RV also has a couple hiccups. Like, one of the things that really surprises me is no entry handle for the entry door. I, I gotta believe that's just some kind of goofy oversight that they'll be fixing or something. But overall, this thing get, gets gets about an A minus in my book. And as we go through, I'll show you the high points, the low points, uh, and you decide kind of how it rates for you. Leave me a comment, let me know your favorite points and the things that you change given the opportunity. And that thing's nice with all the space, but Sometimes folks want to move around a lot and that can be a lot to haul. So with the idea of a couple's traveler, I wanted to look at something that offered really good travel access that was like 30 feet or less that, that really provided me um, easy access to things like the bedroom, the bathroom, the refrigerator in transit. And wouldn't you know it, one of my very favorite brands of RVs are out there, period, makes one that I think is just about one of the best made couples travelers out there today.
Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV on a BEA beautiful day. Taking a look at some updates on the 2445 Rockwood, previously Rockwood Ultra Series, now Rockwood Signature. A uh, major thing here, Rockwood has made all of their fifth wheels part of their Signature Series floor plans. There is just no more middle child, effectively. So Jan lost to Marsha. Uh, what we're looking at here, though, this is one of the very best traveling fifth wheels I could even imagine out there. The entire thing is, it's less than 30, it's less than 29 feet, not even less than 30, it's, it's better than that. Uh, it also rides on Goodyear tires with factory tire pressure monitoring and also has uh, torsion axles and suspension, which for going down highways and stuff like that is one of the best systems that you're gonna be able to find out there. Uh, additionally, no slides on the door side with a maximized patio space really lets you enjoy your campsite. And the traveling access on this one you can get, you can use the bed, the bathroom, the kitchen, all when the slide is closed. Nothing is really blocked off and locked off. It's fantastic in that regard. These are uh, now for 23 double Asdell walls. So Asdell layering inside and out. They've standardized bigger air conditioners. We're looking at uh, uh, RV today with optional second air. You can do things like add extra solar to this. They have a, a factory standard 1000 watt inverter, which isn't massive, but it's a thousand watts more than most brands have. And that little outdoor mini fridge, even that can be active when you're going down the road, which most outdoor refrigerators are not. It's got tank heaters and bigger vent fans, better ceiling vent cover, roof vent covers, all kinds of things. It's got a couple little weird points too. We're gonna hit the good and the weird both along the way. Let me know what you like and dislike. And if you appreciate showing you the good and the weird, hit this. <laughs> so stupid, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Let's go. But this isn't just a list of like couples, fifth wheels, and empty nesters you can retire up to or anything like that. What about families? What about bunkhouses? Okay. Well, if I snapshot my family today, if I was going to pick a fifth wheel for my family of three today. What would I look for? I like the idea of private sleeping. I like the idea of space. If my daughter, uh, if we uh, let her bring a friend or something like that. I also still like the idea of what if we're stuck inside on a rainy day and uh, you know we need to entertain ourselves for a while. And there's one model that really, really speaks to me and I think you're gonna like it. And if you thought this is the same old thing they've been cranking out, think again. I have got a surprise for you. Hello and welcome everybody to Halet RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us the 29.5 BHDS Eagle HT. This has gone through a couple different revisions over the years, but I, I really, I feel like every year they keep dialing it in, getting a little bit closer to even better. Uh, what we're seeing this year, there's a really cool update to the entertainment center. I cannot wait to show you. I, uh, I, I, I kind of want that to be like a neat little big reveal moment, but they've done some revisions here. When they did that, they also adjusted the camp kitchen and it feels kind of a little bit more all in one, all inclusive. And I think the storage in this thing, there was always this weird inside outside storage where some of it was always hard to get to. They've made everything not necessarily bigger, just way, way easier to access. Uh, uh, of course, like all Jayco's now, every single Jayco travel trailer and fifth wheel is completely carpetless. You got their whisper ducted air system, automatic leveling, and, and, and an absolutely unmatched warranty on these two plus three year with allowances for full-time RVing, which is fairly uncommon in this class. Al although Cougar does do a pretty good job of matching that as well. And there's, there's several people who make a floor plan kind of like this. I've never seen one, I think, really nail it quite the way Jayco has on this Eagle. Arctic Wolf has a similar thing where like every room is almost backwards and I don't know how else to describe it, but I'll leave you a link to that in the video description. And that's one of the other things I like to share with you. We have so many different brands here at Halet RV. We can tell you the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between. And that's what you're gonna get from us today. Like, I mean, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at this thing and say, other than up there in that big bedroom, you don't got a whole lot going on in the way of door side windows, which I know is a big hiccup factor for a lot of people. It's not a full bed slide, but it's also lighter weight and shorter. Now that being said, 9,500 pounds, plus the hitch weight that's on this thing, I, I the, the name Eagle HT is definitely, I think, uh, implying some half ton towability. I'm gonna tell you right up front, 
I don't, I don't buy into that. I don't subscribe to that, and I don't believe that. Uh, I think that this is something that's going to be good. There, there are technically a very rare handful of half tons that could handle this. I think this is something that is better suited uh, for a generalized recommendation, saying three quarter ton and above. But it's not so big. It's not like you have to go to a giant diesel dually or something like that. Uh, there's still some vehicles people use every day as daily drivers that could work very well here. And if you appreciate that kind of fair information, hit that subscribe button. And as we go, leave me some comments as we go, kind of like almost live streaming your thoughts, like what do you like, what do you dislike, what would you change given the opportunity and I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can always check for pricing and availability. But what if you're a bigger family or you're going to be spending more time in it? What about the concept of a full-time family RV? And when I start thinking about that, I start thinking of not just more sleeping space, but significantly enhanced living space. When I start thinking of something like that, there is one RV that for me still to this day defines this floor plan and it is the one that everyone I feel is still largely chasing. Uh oh, um, they're not giving me a whole lot of room to complain anymore. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Bish's RV, everybody. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, here in my uh, hometown of Coldwater, Michigan, taking a look at what is perhaps the definitive middle bunk bonus room fifth wheel, the one that really defines the whole class and category today, the 377 RLBH. And it's not to say it's the best, that's subjective. There's some other very good ones out there, but this is the one that a lot of them are chasing. And the thing is, they took so much of the feedback that we gave, all the little points of concern and frankly complaints that I had last year, they've pretty much knocked them out and addressed them and then gone a little bit further. Um, there's a couple little things that uh, actually will be happening later in the season that aren't present on this RV yet. For instance, they're upgrading their running gear further. They're upgrading from the Goodyear Beast Endurance radial up to a Uniroyal H rated radial on these things. It's like a 17 and a half inch tire. First of all, the the fact that it's bigger means it spins fewer times per mile means it generates less heat. I don't know about you, I'm personally not aware of a single just flat tire failure on an H rated tire out there in the marketplace. Now this thing is a big girl. This is a big girl. You're minimum one ton and I don't think you'd be unhappy with a dually on one of these. So I hope you appreciate the clarity and the candid uh, safety information that we fire out there. But this is a monster. We've got a 30,000 BTU standard whisper ducted air system with the prep for a third air if you're so inclined, six point hydraulic auto leveling. Um, of course, zero to 100 degree rated and all that hot cold stuff. You've got a 3,000 pound uh, towing hitch on the back. Um, today, we're looking at one that is just solar prep, but they have four new levels of solar packages available on these. Uh, able to just totally crank it up to 11 if that's what you're looking for, or 1,200 as the top wattage would be. All the windows on the door side. In terms of middle bunk fifth wheels, this has perhaps the best camp kitchen available out there. They've enhanced that with inverter prep and so much more. I can't wait to show you this thing and all the little updates and just the glitz and the glitter on this one. Um, I'm gonna try to find a couple few points of concern, but there's very little to really complain about on this one anymore. And if you appreciate how we go out of our way to try to find something that maybe isn't awesome, uh, hit that subscribe button. Know that we'll always shoot you straight. But in the meantime, let's get inside, pop your popcorn. This is gonna be a show. So we've looked at a couple, I think, very um, uh, direct categories, you know, uh, you know, couples, small traveling RV destination, big family, fifth wheel, whatever the case may be. Uh, what if you have truly adopted a full-time nomadic lifestyle where you need good living space because you're in it a lot, but you also really still need travel access to those real critical features, the bedroom, the bathroom, the refrigerator. That can be a really tricky uh, combination of things to put together, especially when you start talking about full timing. I think the idea of a washer dryer hookup starts to feel like it's an important part of that conversation. And that can be really hard to uh, work into the mix. There is one though, and there, there's a couple of them that will do this, but there's one that I look at and every time I go through it and I, I, I just feel like, yeah, yeah, they nailed this one. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd from Bish's RV here in Coldwater, Michigan with another Cougar today. And if Katy Perry makes music for tweens, Cougar makes tweeners. 
basically. This is an RV that kind of fits in between the more traditionally outlined things out there. So like there's Big Cougar, Little Cougar. There's the Little Cougar 29 RLI that gives us opposing living slides, but like a small compact upper deck. Then there's the 316 Big Cat Cougar that gives us opposing slides and then a big upper deck with a full east-west bed slide. And then there's this one that kind of slides right in between the two. But what's awesome about this is it still gives us stackable washer dryer prep, but it does it actually downstairs in the big pantry space of the kitchen. So this thing has either more kitchen storage space than you're gonna know what to do with, unless you're my mother. Boy, she can pack a she can pack an RV heavy. She is one that will challenge the GVW of an RV for sure. Um, or uh, you can go combo or stackable washer dryer, whatever works for you, and still maintain a true queen bedroom upstairs that is very, very friendly uh, if you're claustrophobic with nice wide open side stands. Now we've got uh, still dual power awnings, automatic leveling, zero to 110 degree rated, because that's the thing. Cougars are actually some of the best hot climate campers you're gonna find out there. People don't talk about that enough, uh, especially when you factor in the second factory air that's been optioned out of this one. There's also factory solar, um, there's uh, the rear towing hitch that's on this one in case you want to put like a generator cargo tray or something on the back or a small little enclosed trailer that you can haul with you or anything like that. Uh, it does have a couple hiccups like the fact that it just doesn't have an east-west bed, but they make other models for that. For what they were looking to accomplish here, I think this thing is really, really well done. And as we go, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. It does have a couple hiccups and hangups, so I'm going to make sure I point those out. And a couple notes up in the bedroom that I want to share with you. But as I always have a propensity to do, I like to throw an honorable mention out there. I don't typically, in, in my list, I don't usually like to have the same company like listed twice because, I don't know, it just, just feels weird. Anyway, um, I, I want to give a uh, tip of the hat to the Keystone Cougar 23 MLE. It nearly took the ranking of best couples traveler for me. And, you, you know, you wouldn't have to argue with me real awful hard to maybe tip that scale. I think it is pound for pound. Just it, it is an absolutely awesome model with good space, good storage, amazing, just really, really strong offering overall. But I kind of thought about it and I really tend to be a function over fashion person. I tend to be very practical to a fault. Well, what if I threw all of that out? in what I'm going to call a category of the ultimate pipe dream. If money was no object, if I didn't have to worry about towing it, like if, if I, I didn't have to worry about anything and I just went with what is, for me, I think one of the most impressive, over the top, does all of the things fifth wheels, there was one that stood as a pretty clear winner for me. Hey everybody, you like the last Brinkley that we brought you? So here's a brand new one, the very first exclusive sneak peek at their new toy hauler, the Model G. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd kicking in the door down here at Brinkley's headquarters. Had the opportunity to sneak in once again and get you the very first look of anybody out there of their new Model G toy hauler series. And just like the Model Z fifth wheel that you saw before, the idea behind this one is that a member of their founding team, a partner, executive, brand manager with the company, actually took this out, tested it, used it to see how it was going to perform on the road uh, to see what they could improve. Now, they already had a couple notes, but part of the reason they asked me to come down here is just like we did on the Model Z. They realized that all you folks out there are the single best source for development information possible, and they want all the input. Tell them what they're doing right, where they're nailing it, where they're failing it, where they could do it a little bit better. And I can't promise they're going to be able to incorporate everybody's ideas, but they're going to get quite a few in there from what I've seen. So uh, this is been run down to the Florida Keys and back like on a two-week hard stress test and what's awesome about this is like over the top just comes standard on this uh, Model G right here so it's a 100 uh, a 101 inch wide body it only has three awnings and all the windows in the world on the door side of the RV there's so many crazy little features that like once you've seen them you're gonna wonder why no RV manufacturer has been doing this before like it has one of the best, maybe the very best sound system I've ever heard on any RV. And you cannot see any of the outside speakers, but you could be blowing away some DJ on stage somewhere with this thing. Uh, when you shift into reverse, every light on the outside of the sucker lights up. Everybody in the, and their brother's gonna know what you're doing on the road. But the interior, one of the key things they did different on this 
is uh, the, the loft for the garage area, that loft bunk. They actually put it in the garage instead of in the living area. And what they've really truly done is created a luxury living fifth wheel that just happens to have a totally separate flex function room on the back. Now, obviously, you, you know, you could load side by sides, you could load family, you could load friends. Uh, you, you could do anything you wanted with this thing and then some. There is so much. I cannot wait to cover with you on this. All the cool outside storage things they did different. A couple little personal notes I have, but once again, we are here today to get your feedback. Whether you're a toy hauler enthusiast or not, please watch through this. Let us know what you like. Let us know the one or two things that you would change given the opportunity. And if you appreciate, once again, how we break away from the office to get you this footage, make sure you like our video and subscribe if you're new with us and catch us on the next one. But for now, you're in for a treat. But keep in mind, there's an entire world of fifth wheels out there. And again, today's uh, selections, I guess you could say, I don't even wanna say list, because there's obviously no real particular order to this. But today's selections um, were really based on how I camp and the things that would work for me and my family. It could be totally wrong for you and your family. Your personal hit list could be very, very different. So I'd be kind of curious to know, what do you think about the ones that I've picked? And, um, you know, is there, one that you think works a little bit better or one that works a little bit better for you leave me a comment let me know maybe there's something i need to get on my hit list and get some video footage of and in the meantime if you like today's video if you appreciate how we give you all this information and remember there are links in the video description to see a full length video tour of everything that i mentioned today as well as links to check pricing and availability anywhere that we have them in stock and available uh, hit that subscribe button, like our video, let us know. And if you're just a regular return member of the RV Nerd Herd and you're wondering what I have to say today, I don't know, hit, uh, leave, me, leave me a little hashtag Nerd Herd or something down in the comment section. But uh, either way, until next time, thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.